Welcome to the NLP View with your host, Donna Blinston. Each week, Donna will explore how the techniques of NLP can help improve your personal and professional life. And now, here's your host, Donna Blinston. Hello and welcome to the NLP View. My name is Donna Blinston. Today's guest is Martin Shervington, author of the best-selling book, Life. You can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to surf. Neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, is an approach to communication, personal development, and psychotherapy. Its title refers to a stated connection between the neuro- neurological processes, neuro, our language, linguistics, and the behavioral patterns that we have learned through our experience, the programming. NLP is capable of providing people with resources that they need to cope with every circumstance. Martin Shervington's book, Life, You Can't Stop the Ways But You Can Learn How to Surf, is a clever approach to bringing about change that is actually quite simple. Martin has combined multiple personal development approaches and created a fun journey of self-discovery, exploring different options for improving your current situation. So I'd like to welcome to the show Martin Shervington. Hello, Martin. Hi, Donna. How are you? I am brilliant, thank you. And yourself? Yes, very good. Good. Well, it's great to have you on the show today, Martin. And I know that your book and the advice and what we talk about now will benefit so many people, especially in this current climate, economic climate, I mean, that we're in today. Absolutely. I think that so often all we need is like uh, little techniques, little tools, little skills um, to give us a boost because often we're in the right direction. Um, and that's the great thing about some of the skills, uh, skills of NLP is that when you um, get introduced to them, they're very easy to apply in your own life um, and uh, they can help in, in so many areas that can then uh, give you more options. So when it comes to some of finance and uh, some of the pressures that people are under and jobs and dealing with their boss and all these sorts of things, yeah. um, hopefully we can start to you know, give people a few hints and tips on the language they can use or how they can think about situations differently to get better results. Yeah, that's that. What you've just said there has summed up one of the things that I really enjoyed about your book. It was just the ability to look at our own language and see how we're limiting ourselves without even realizing it. And it was that, the um, the questions that you've written in your book and the way you've explained it, and it, 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 all, it, it makes you look at things differently. And often it's just the sheer fact that we've not, we've not been made to ask, to look at things in that way. And once we do start looking in that way, everything starts to change. It's, well, I love NLP, as you're probably your guest <laughs> as we carry yeah. on talking. <laughs> Well, before we start, Martin, could you just tell our audience a bit about yourself and your background? Yeah, so if we do the the, the, the academic bit first, I uh, went to university, uh, I studied law and business uh, degree and qualified in oh, when I was about 22, moved to Australia uh, for two years to teach windsurfing. I thought I'd take a bit of time out. It was not meant to be two years. I think it was meant to be about nine months, but I stayed anyway. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I came across NLP and... Uh, started practicing yoga and things in, in Australia, um, came back to the UK, did a little bit more travelling, but I came back to the UK and studied um, NLP then um, with a chap called John Seymour, um, who then became my writing partner, who I wrote this this book with, and um, so that's when I was about 25, and then I studied um, at the University of London, um, organisational psychology, uh, because I wanted to apply a lot of these skills into the workplace and to, to help people look at um, improving their performance in that context as well. Um, then from there, I've been coaching, consulting. I, um, I work both in, um, in both capacities for individuals and for sort of businesses and, and corporate clients. Um, but a lot of it, what I you know, love to do is to write. And mm-hmm. so over the last few years, I've brought out quite a few books. Um, and uh, this being one from earlier this year that I've been working on for probably about 10 years. Um, okay. Because it, it's a really fun approach, and I wanted the timing to be right when I brought it out, because I wanted there to be some jokes in there, and I, I, I actually went off to, to San Francisco to study uh, stand-up comedy for six months. I, mean, <laughs> I, don't know if I, I don't know if I told you that before. Uh, no. 
that is earlier. But uh, yeah, that that's one of the things I wanted to bring in is is how humour can be so powerful for um, relieving the situation, for communicating with people, for relating, and helping people to 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 understand each other better. So that's kind of that's how I approach things. Hmm. You, yeah, you can see that in your book, and it, the book is funny. And there was many times I caught myself laughing, and it does it distracts you. It distracts where um, what you're because the questions that you're asking in your book that you're getting people to think about can hook you into different areas that might challenge you personally. And the light relief that's there from the humour that you've got in just brings everything back into perspective and enables you to, to carry on through that journey. It it does. The the fun aspect of your book, it it makes it real. Yeah, it well, does. That, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, it does. Well, it makes it real. Well, that, that's always the intention. I was actually down, I, I um, just came back from Brazil. I was working there um, uh, teaching a coaching course um, up until last week. And one of the things I realised, it's it's just it, when you can lighten it, when you can have a joke, it just allows the emotional state to be positive. Um, and and it's, you, you can't be in a negative emotional state if you're laughing. And that's one thing yeah. which is great for learning. Um, but it's also, you know, when somebody's reading the book, you want them to be enjoying it. And if you can break out from exactly as you say, those slightly heavier sections where they've got to do a little self-reflection and question. Um, maybe where they're going in life and the relationships they have and so on. It is great then just to lift it up a little bit. Yeah, it does, and it's there's um you, you discuss a lot in your book about um, acknowledging the negative emotions that happen in events and the humour, as, as we as we said, it's it allows you to go back to that event without going into the emotions and to acknowledge what actually happened. And there's also that about paying attention to what actually was the original emotion. One thing that you've discussed and I find a lot with my coaching clients and within the business is that an event will happen, whether it be personal, professional, whatever aspect of life, and the initial event will have caused you to respond in one way through one emotion. But then the more times you mull over it and you go back over it and discuss it, you add in additional emotions, maybe anger, frustration or guilt, and it becomes an even bigger thing than it actually is. Absolutely, yeah. It becomes compounded almost, isn't it? You don't just feel yeah. angry. You're guilty that you feel angry, and then you feel frustrated that you feel guilty that you feel angry, and you have these these, these states that add on to each other, yeah. Completely. Mm. You do. And the way that um, you have guide, you guide the reader just to, to take to take a step back and um, step away from the emotions and just look at it from that older, wiser eye and just um, review where they're at, why what happened originally and to reflect. It's it's that whole process of change that is it's very tangible and very, very easy the way it's been digested within your book. Yes, yeah, so that's great. And a little technique for people listening in relation to this is actually around um, creating space after an emotion arises. So, I mean, like you and I know, there's so many ways to, to, to approach emotions, but, but this is just, just one, is to uh, allow the emotion to be without talking about it, without adding to it, without making it more complex, as we were saying, without feeling frustrated and angry, because that, all of that is usually an internal dialogue or an internal visual picture which we're running about the scene. And instead of doing that, it's actually just to notice, ah, I feel anger here. That's interesting. And to start to gain space between the experience and the person, which is you, who's experiencing it. And if you can do that, you can then do other things. That's almost the first stage. Uh, you can start to go, okay, well, how would I rather feel in this situation? And it's a bit of a strange concept that people don't necessarily realize um, until they practiced it, is that you can change your emotional state. Um, and you can change it very quickly. And one of the ways is to change your physiology. So if you notice that there's a, you're in a, a particular emotion that says anger, that anger, then you are holding your body in a particular way. You're maybe clenching your fists or you're yeah. in yourself or so on. And if you go, oh, hold on a second, I notice, and you bring that awareness to yourself, um, then the next stage is, okay, how would I rather feel? What's going to be better for everybody in the situation um, if I had a, an alternative emotion? 
So if you then go, okay, well, what would it be like to be calm, to be relaxed, to be um, uh, more, um, I don't know, what other positive, give me some positive emotions, Donna. What else we... um, <laughs> happiness, uh, joy, peace. Um... Okay, great. Absolutely. I, those are the ones I was looking for. So, got <laughs> so what would it be like? How would it feel to be in that position? And there's things that you can do using NLP that you can recall times in the past. Um, and, and this isn't NLP is a bundle of skills in this way. So, you know, this is one of those skills. So anybody can can take this and run with it. Um, you know, what, remember a time in the past when you did feel happy or joyful or peaceful or um, whatever the emotion is, and you start to re-enter into that emotional state using your mind, using the, mm-hmm. the in ed- instead of entering into the negative, subjectively negative, anger state, if that's not one that's going to serve you. Now, sometimes anger can be useful. It can be appropriate. When somebody's getting beaten up across the street, you can get angry and call the police and, and act. But very often, these are the small triggers in our lives uh, that, that, that create the anger situation, not the big events. So it's being aware that we are sometimes our worst enemy. And if we're able to manage our emotional states better and able to create space by observing the emotion, then we're able to then take more appropriate action, which leads to better results. And the better results usually are what is best for everybody in the situation, um, as opposed to acting out of a a self-defense, out of a protective mechanism, which is what we usually do from those historic patterns. Oh, absolutely. That's great advice. Really good advice. It's it is it's it's it, it, some it is taking charge of what's happening, taking charge of yourself, and not allowing you to be at effect from the emotions that are being um, that are being created. You're Absolutely. you're being you're you know you, you are you're, you're back at cause. You're responsible, and when you're in that situation, because you're more responsible, you're you've got more options. You've, you're more flexible. And you can see things completely different rather than being an effect of potentially somebody else's behavior. Absolutely. Well, if we, if we go to the, the, the title of, of the book of, uh, of Life, You Can't Stop the Ways, But You Can Learn How to Surf, the, the reason I, I gave it that title was instead of being washed up on the shore by your emotions and by other people's emotions and circumstance, you're actually learning to be in the circumstance and surfing it. Um, and you are the surfer, and you're also feeling the situation, which can be the wave and the, the board that's underneath you, and you, you, know, you have a much more enjoyable experience when you're engaged in the process as opposed to feeling you're getting tumbled in the waves. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Hmm. One thing I wanted to talk to you about is one thing that I'm, I'm currently doing a lot of work around is around um, the evolution of people's language. And our language that we use and that we choose to use is almost, it's language that we've been taught to use from being a child when it was imprinted on us before we were seven. And then the language that we modeled from, let's say, seven to 14. And then, you know, the our socializing years where we've gathered language that's appropriate to our our relationships, our peers, our work environments, our business, our successes, etc., and because our language is often very much learned and um, we can't take kind of roll in that same language, especially from myself as a nurse, you're very much taught sentences to say as part of your nurse training. You listen yeah. to your mentors, how they explain things, for example, and you repeat it the same way, adding your little tweaks. Yeah. So all that's very much, it's ingrained in you. You've got like an automatic pilot response. And one thing that um, I'm looking at a lot and I challenge a lot is people who use a lot of the I can't do, I won't do, I shouldn't do, I've tried that before and it didn't work, all those um, limiting options that they've chosen to to use in their language. And it's that way of um, of questioning it and saying, okay, so what if you could? What if you did it differently? And that's one thing that you've also explained in your book, which was wonderful to read because you gave me even more tools to use and more ideas. And I just went off on myself when I was reading it in the chapter. What's what's your experience on it and how um, how do you use it? I I remember when I did my NLP practitioner course, which is 20 days long in in Bristol with with John Seymour. And 
we practice those patterns. And I'll, 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 I'll read what they are. So it could be really you know, handy for some people um, if they like to, to stare back at what they're saying. They may, they may notice and, uh, and find this useful. Uh, if you say, I can't, then the question to ask yourself is, well, what's stopping you? If you say, I shouldn't, you say, well, what would happen if you did? You say, you, you, I, I never do that, or I, I never could do that. So, well, is it really never? Um, I hate that. So, so a lot of energy goes into hate. You know, do I hate it, or is it just dislike? Um, I'll try and do it. Well, instead of trying, what about setting a time scale and, and doing it? Now, those simple changes of how one thinks about the words allows you to realize that with the words are... Concepts that we have hold us. So whatever our um, our language is, it tends to create our worlds. Mm -hmm. And these patterns embed down, and we say, "Oh, I can't learn technology. I'm, I, I, I'm never good at these things." Or um, you know, oh, I, I shouldn't do it now because I've got too many other things to do. All of that. That's how it, these things manifest. For instance. And um, I know this as people get older um, and technology keeps getting quicker as a pace of change, then a lot of people find that they're feeling sort of left out. And I've come yeah. across it in, in, with, with family members. It's like, well, actually, this, this, this play, this enjoy exploring this and seeing if you can sort of break through those um, limiting beliefs uh, as they would manifest. And it's the language is where they start. So changing the patterns and just going, hold on a second. What if I approach this differently? You know, how would this look? Now, that's something which, I mean, it's a big area here. And, it, and, and over the 20 days when I did the, the course, I found myself realizing how often I used certain negative patterns. And I didn't have that until I practiced it. You know, I was like, wow, this is incredible. I'm doing and that's the excitement when you do go on a program of NLP, learning NLP, or you read the books, or you get the audio tapes, you suddenly realize how habituated we can be. In oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and sometimes you go, but we're all habituated, yeah, but we can have positive patterns that serve us better than the ones that we perceive to be negative because they don't serve us so well. So that's what we really want to learn is we can do habits. Let's do the ones that you know allow us to feel healthier and have better relationships and have a, a, a better approach to money and all of that sort of thing. So that's where these kind of skills often manifest is in the territories and in the areas of personal development, relating to relationships, um, relating to health, relating to, to, um, to money, um, and so on. I mean, and that's, that's what I, I love about this area. Is it is a massive set of skills that um, whoever you learn them from Adds their own twist and their own flavour and their own spice, I guess, if we were going to the culinary um, metaphor, to to the to the experience. But ultimately, it boils down to a staring back at how we approach life, how we construct the world using our language, what we believe we can and what we believe we can't do, and then appropriately altering how we are to get results that we want. From that. I share your passion around it. I've um, I had a similar journey on um, on my practitioner and on the, oh, on all the training through to the trainer's training, and didn't seem to matter how many times um, I looked at it or how many times I'd learnt and made myself aware of the language that I used. The more I looked into the language that I was using and questioned it and. Um, it is that looking in the mirror and saying it back to yourself and looking at the response it makes to you. When they're acting as if they can and they're acting as if and they're able to do it, they're already on the way to succeeding. And as a coach, to watch that and see that happen in front of you as another person, to see that physiology change, see the, um, all those the motivational wheels start you know, running away, it's, very, it's enlightening, really enlightening. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The, it's that, and um, when we're talking about the can't, the won't, and the shouldn't, there's also that side of that you can't, your own conscious mind doesn't process the negatives. So when we're saying, I don't want to um, struggle, I don't want to, to feel this way, that's another area, again, a huge, big, vast of 
of discovery and learning that you know I'm just rolled up in and wondering all over the place with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, many, many years ago, I'll say probably about 12 years ago, I wrote a book called Don't Think of Purple Spotted Oranges. Yes. And <laughs> it was a fully illustrated book. It was a lot of fun. And it was it was my first NLP book that I wrote. And the idea behind the title was, if you say to somebody, don't think of um, worry and don't think about that awful event that could happen in the future, don't think of winning the lottery, don't think, whatever the don't think of, is deleted, as you said, by the by the brain. Um, and what you process is the content, is the, I win the lottery or I worry about that future event and so on. So when we say to people, oh, you know, don't worry about that exam because, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? You know, I'm sure <laughs> it won't go wrong. All the person hears is exam. Worry we'll about it. <laughs> the cry, no, why are you doing you know, but we don't realize that that's just simply because the brain will process the content. It won't process those negative. It just hears the, 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 the punctuation of those, the, 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 um, sort of the, the content of the, of the sentence. So one of the things that you look at is, okay, what do you say instead? You said, think of, and then you look at outcome. And you drive the language, and this is one of the key things, towards the outcome. And you know, outcomes are huge in the field of NLP. Um, and I think that's one of the big things that I looked at is, well, what do you want instead of the situation? Yeah. That's almost the starting point, the, the, the one which if you, I don't want this. Well, what do you want instead? And when you start to look at that, the energy goes in that way, in that direction. So if somebody says, I don't want to have a, a terrible relationship with my partner, so well, what do you want instead? I want a harmonious relationship in which we're you know, respecting each other and enjoying each other's company. It's like, well, you're already well on the way to, to, to processing what needs to happen to, to have that. And that's great. But it's a change of thinking. Uh, and you're absolutely right. It comes from a change of language. It does. And it's it it changes. As, as well as the changing of language, it changes you as a person. I know, um, with, as I say, the work that I'm doing, um, as soon as you start asking those questions of what do you like instead, especially people that are coming and they're in that stuck state that, you know, they're at the effect of the recession, the financial, everything that's going on at the moment, they're at that. But when you ask them what is it you want instead, often they don't actually know. Sure. And because they're yeah. spending so much time looking at what it is they don't want, They've they've almost turned off the what I do want filters. Absolutely, very common, even, I agree, yeah. It is, and even if that slaps them in the face, they don't see it because they're you know the blinkers are on to I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want this, rather than the options of what they do actually want. Yeah, and, and sometimes you, you, you're so caught up and, and and you have fear about holding on to a situation which doesn't even work anymore that you haven't got the ability with your own resources to get to where you want to get to and that's what the role of the coach and and the role uh the, you know of, of going on programs and reading books can do is just to shake you a little bit and go hold on a second i've got to look at the situation differently and by looking at it differently i can then take action which is more appropriate than just acting out of those historic patterns those habits it has, and that's you know another one of the beauties of your book. It's getting get starting asking those questions to yourself, looking at it at what it is you want instead, learning not to pay to pay attention on things that are going to work for you, instead of focusing you know as we've said on things that don't work. It's a whole it's a whole new way. Well, NLP in itself, it's a whole new way of of thinking, of working, of everything from the foundations upwards and I know my journey was it's phenomenal I'm still on it and, and I don't want to call I don't think you'll ever stop I think to be honest I, once I you've got it, on the NLP journey absolutely I agree it's, it's, it, it, for me I stop when I stop writing that, mm -hmm. as I'm still writing I'm still learning <laughs> that's what I find uh, yeah yeah, I f yeah, I found that with my book. I'm already looking at the the sequels to the book or well, the series of the books, and it's it's that. Do I, which road do I go down next? What's um, what what's your next step? Do you think what's the next book that you'll be looking into? Well, or what areas are you working at the moment? I've just brought out a book on Google Plus called The Art and Science of Google Plus. 
um, because I've been studying that platform, which is a, the new social layer that goes across all the, the Google services. Um, and I mean, I find it a phenomenal tool. I mean, a phenomenal experience, really. So I spent a long time, far too long, studying, analyzing, looking at the communication aspects of the platform. Um, and I've just written that up and it's just come out this week. Um, so that's on Amazon. And uh, what I'll be doing now is continue to write on certain aspects of uh, communication within that platform and, and publishing it within my blog and, and, and posts there. Um, but also, I mean, I'm still coaching. I'm still, still working with individuals quite a lot. And so I've just come back from Brazil. I'm off to the States uh, again soon. So I, I'm pretty busy here at the minute, Donna. I am. Um, so I don't want to say I'm going to do another book. I'm glad that this book's come out because it's about 280 pages long, actually. It was, it was, it was a lot of work. Um, so I'm quite happy to have a month off. Uh, I'm planning a Well deserved. Well <laughs> deserved. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all it. In this area is a wonderful field, and I think if people have the um, the intuition, really, uh, that there's something that they can gain from exploring, particularly NLP. NLP is a wonderful toolkit for communication with oneself, for communi- communication with others, and I believe that we should have been taught it at school. Oh, uh, completely. And, and and it should be how we should have the option of processing information in this way which is you know what do you want when you make that phone call to that person if you're doing business what do you want when you um get in a car journey and you've got two hours uh sitting on you know by yourself what do you want to achieve and you can start to look at well actually i want to think through these issues i want to think through um creative ideas for this bit and you can start to drive your intention a little bit more appropriately on those kind of you know, this time by yourself and things like this, we're not taught. So what do we do? We just run through the historic patterns. We just run through talking to ourselves in ways which may not be the most helpful. We focus on problems as opposed to solutions and so on. So for me, I, I love to encourage people to explore these areas. So that's going to continue. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And I could talk to you about this all day and all night and all the next day and week and so on. Um, it's an area that well, I'm very passionate about the evolution of language is is my current focus and um, it should be when we start learning language in school, it should be on the syllabus there and then. Absolutely, <laughs> well, yeah. It's been lovely speaking to you, Martin. Before we go, could you let all of our audience know um, how they can contact you, find out about you, your new book, your um, everything? Okay. Um, if you Google... Uh, into the search engine, Martin Sherbinton, there will be a couple of sites that come up. One is my Life Coaching Expert site, which lists all my books. And my Google Plus profile will come up there as well. Uh, if you go to Amazon, uh, the Art and Science of Google Plus, um, wherever you are in the world probably, um, will be listed now. So that came out this week, uh, Kindle and um, hard copy. And uh, Twitter, Martin underscore Bristol is my Twitter. And my Facebook, uh, if you either you want to ping me a message or subscribe, or I may even friend you, you never know, at uh, Martin S and then the number one. Um, I'm pretty friendly on there as well. So th- those are my different channels. Brilliant. Um, it's been, as I say, it's been lovely speaking to you, Martin. I just wish we had more time. That half an hour has absolutely flown it's flat. by. Has flown, yeah. You put you put, put both of us in the direction. I think <laughs> subjects, which is great. It is. Uh, to all of our listeners, it is an excellent book. Loads of great advice. Um, different ways to think. Different ways to get you on that road of success that you really want. So. To our listeners, I want to thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to learn more about NLP, then please tune in to the NLP View each week and also visit my website, donnablinston.com, where you can pick up a copy of my best-selling book, Psychobabble, a straightforward, plain English guide to the benefits of NLP. Thank you for listening. <laughs>